To continue our video series, in this short video, I'm going to show you how to create a GIF or an animated plot. In this case, I'm going to create an animated bar chart of temperatures, soil temperatures at 10 centimeter, 50 centimeter, and 100 centimeter, and show how they change over time. All right, so the first step is to create a function that creates the plots for us. So what I have done over here, I have defined a function called make plots, and the function takes two variables. One is your data frame, the other one is a start date, is a date that you want to start with. All right, and then to set up the figure, I have defined my figure and the size, and I have defined the x limits in my area, the temperature does not change, does not go lower than negative 30 degrees Celsius and higher than 30 Celsius. So that's that. The label for x-axis is temperature in degrees Celsius. The label for y-axis is soil depth in centimeter. And then the font size for the ticks is going to be 20. All right, so this is the first step to set up the plot. The next thing that we want to do, we want to filter our data. I have already run the cells over here except for this one because I do want I do not want to generate the report. This is building up on top of what we talked about in the previous parts of this video series. So if you haven't watched that, watch to know what climate data we are working with and what we have done with it so far. All right. So next thing that I want to do, I am going to filter the data. So my data frame which is right over here, I'm going to filter it to only have soil temperature at 10, 50, and 100 centimeters. So this is exactly what I have done over here. Based on the date that is that I will give to this function, it will filter the data frame only for the columns that I have specified over here. Now the next part is to create the figure, right? What I want to do, I want to make sure that whenever I have positive temperature, it creates a bar chart that is red, and whenever I have um, negative temperature, degrees Celsius, it creates a blue bar. So I need to, as you can tell, I need to write an if statement, right? And my if statement would be something like that. Okay, so this needs to be indented. So let me do this really quick, there we go. Okay, so it reads the data for 100 centimeter, 50 and 10, 0, 1 and 2, right? And it decides if the data is larger than 0, the color would be red, and if it's less than 0, it's going to be blue, right? You can change the height of the bar. 0 0.8 was suitable for me. You can change it to make to actually change the thickness of the bars that you have. And width over here is the data that you have. Okay, so I have done that repeatedly for the three, I'm going to have three bars, so I've done it for three, 100 centimeter, 50 centimeter, and 10 centimeter, and the labels, these are the labors. The labors are negative because this is deep in the soil, right? Okay, and the last thing that I want to do is essentially finalize my figure and save it to a location. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first add a title to my figure. So I set the title to show me the date. And remember, this is going to iterate and show me the date. So it, this is going to show me the date and the font size is going to be 30. The location, I need to create a folder within the content folder and call it figures, capital letters, and it will save all the dates right over here. So I'm going to go over here and click and cl create a new folder and call it figures. And this figures is exactly the name that I have right over here. Okay. And um, we are asking to save the figures into this location that we defined and the DPI or the quality is 20. The higher this quality, this is gonna take a longer time to create that. And eventually I'm gonna close the figure to make sure that the memory is not used for this. Okay. So I'm gonna run this, there we go. This is the definition. Now we need to call this um, function, excuse me. Now we need to call this function, right? Okay, so I have another piece of code. I defined the start code from 2014 
of the, the start of my data frame right over here, start of the data frame. Uh, but instead of, because my data frame goes all the way to 2023, so instead of going all the way to 2023, I have defined an end date, which is just one year later. Notice that this date is exclusive. So this date is not included in your images. Essentially what we are doing using this function, we are creating separate images, okay? And now that we have these separate images, I have defined a for loop and I read the dates in my date dates list. This is going to be a list of strings that have the dates in it. And then I'm going to define actually just to show you how it will look like. Let me comment this out and show you how it looks like. So dates would be like this. As you can see, dates is going to be a list of all numbers starting from my start date all the way to the end dates right over here. Okay, so I am going to remove that and there we go. Okay, so this is going to create a list of dates and put this into the function that I made right over here and the function takes data frame and the date that I define right over here. All right, I'm gonna run this and this is gonna take in my computer about 30 seconds the higher the resolution the higher the date range this is going to take even more time so um i'm going to fast forward this part of the video and once it's done i will come back and show you the result all right it took 34 seconds now if i extend this folder that i created you can see that I have so many images created from the start date. Let me actually double click on it so you can see the image right over here. This is the image that I have created. This is 10 centimeter, 50 and 100 centimeter and X axis is temperature. Um, as you can see, all, all the bars are red. That means the temperature are positive and this is zero. So all the temperatures are positive. Let's go to a negative temperature. In January, the soil temperature is negative. So I'm going to go there. Let's see right over here. As you can see, these two are negative. So these two are blue and this one is positive. 100 centimeters positive. So it's red. Perfect. So I have all these um, um, photos, all these images created. Now, the next thing that I need to do is to create a GIF um, to animate all these images. So in order to do that, you, we need to use a package and this package is called image IO. So I'm going to import this package right over here. If you have not image IO installed in your Google Colab, you can easily do that by pip install image IO. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do, I want to create a list, an empty list, and I call it images. So this is an empty list of all the images. And then read the file name of all these files in the figures folder, right? File names, How? what would be the file names? The file names would be date.png, right? So it's in my figures for, folder. File name is date, which reads it from the dates list right over here plus .png in a string. So this would be the name, the location of the file. And eventually I am going to use uh, this method to create an animated plot and save, saves it in this folder again. All right, so pretty straightforward. I'm gonna run this and show you how it will look like. It will take a couple of seconds and after that it will be ready for seconds. All right, so now if I go down you will see that at the end of this list there's a file created called animated plot dot uh, gif double click on that and you will see after a couple of seconds you will see that your gif is created look at the date is moving and as the date is moving the bar chart is uh, also moving and it's animated so you can see how soil temperature changes over time obviously in spring and summer soil temperature is higher and in winter months soil temperature is below temperature be below freezing okay the last thing that i want to talk about is let me close this how we can 
download all this data that we have created in our device, right? So to, in order to do that, you essentially need to, let me add this. And so we want to put all these figures in a zip file and download it because you cannot, you don't want to download it one by one, right? Okay. So what you need to do is just use one command line function over here that creates a zip file for you. So create a zip file called figures zip and it free, creates a zip file from this folder over here. So this folder, if I go up again, you can easily see it. There we go. This is under content and it's called figures. So I'm going to run this. And after a couple of seconds, you can see that a zip file has been created over here that you can easily download it in your local device and use it later. So in this video, I just showed you how you can create um, a GIF animated plot and how to use that to give life to your data and understand how it changes over time.